let's all say Jeremiah 33 and 3 together. Amen. And you that maybe are watching this uh, tape later on YouTube, start quoting Jeremiah 33 and 3. 3 is God's number of deliverance. When you look throughout the Bible, many cases, amen, God turned that thing around in three days. Hallelujah. Brought forth deliverance in three days. Hallelujah. And Hosea, he says, amen, in two days I will revive you and in three days, amen, raise you up, turn this thing around. So whatever situation you're facing, Hallelujah. Let's do Jeremiah 33 and 3. God says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen. So let's believe to receive, amen, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, knowing that God is an on-time God. He's still on the throne. And you know what? He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let's God minimize hallelujah god's presence with us right now hallelujah we are seated together with him in heavenly places that's what the bible says you have been repositioned hallelujah you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son so we have switched kingdoms amen we have, we have switched cities we are a royal priesthood we're a holy nation amen if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things are passed away and all things are new. So all things are new. They have become new. So I don't think you have got to live in the sickness and the indebtedness and the poverty and the lack and the slack and the pain of your past. Let's cross over. Let's reposition ourselves. Hallelujah. Let's start praying from a different position, not a different uh, position of doubt, a position of fear. Let's change our position. Let's get out from under the table and sit up, amen, at the table because the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table, hallelujah, but the Lord declared that healing is the children's bread. He told that woman, this here belongs to the children, but she said, let some crumbs fall down on the floor. Even the puppies get that, amen, but amen, we are not down there with the puppies. We're up here at the table. We're seated with him, praise the Lord, so pray for from your position. Thank you, Lord. We come boldly to the throne of grace where we might find grace and mercy to help in the time of need. Oh, yes, we do. Hallelujah. So now, praise the Lord, we're going to go ahead into our prayers so we can move on into our Bible class and hopefully all of our readers are on the line. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to call on Sister Barbara Harris. She's going to start six and uh, pray for us. She is praying for our families. Amen. She is praying for unity in our homes and churches. She is praying for all of our church leaders and even revival in our churches. She's praying for our children and the schools that they attend, as well as their teachers. She's praying for the first responders and all those who are heavy hearted because of bereavement, losing a loved one. But we are yet encouraging you. Hallelujah. Sister Barbara Harris, star six at this time. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, let us pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We come together, a uh, wild Bible study, Father, on one of four. Father, we commit this, prayer, this Bible study to you, Father. This prayer unto you, Lord Jesus. For you are wonderful, counsel. You are mighty God. You are everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. You are Yeshua. You are Yahweh. You are El Shaddai. King Jesus is your name. You're the Alpha and Omega, the personal life, you're the beginning and the end, Father. And we commit this to you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for another day. The words that you inhabit the praises of your people, Father. And we praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We lift up this wild Bible study to you, Lord, as we go together with this revelation of all these words, Jesus, that we're able to use it, and we may be show it and share it with other people that we come in contact with, that we be ready, Father, for your appearing in the sky, Lord Jesus, that we all be ready. 
not only individually, but collectively, Father God. We ask you, Lord, we just come before you right now to be asking for forgiveness for our sins, washing them away as far as the east is from the west, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you. Declare your word, Father. You're appearing in the sky, Father. We are just waiting for you, Lord Jesus. Father, we declare and proclaim, Lord, thanking you, Lord, for another night, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for, for this this Bible study, Father, starting with Evangelical East in Tennessee, across these United States, and probably up Lord, Father God. But we give it all over to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Father, we lift our families to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for protecting our families, Father, and the churches, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for every song that that's going to be sung. Every breeder, Lord Jesus, we thank you. And you want to come aside, Father God. Yes, Lord, those that are unsaved, those that are saved, Father God, bring us close together to you, Lord Jesus. Let us be on one accord, Father. Father, you said you family, Father God. You started way back in Genesis, Father. One man, one woman, Father God. We lift our families to you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, unite, unite them, Lord Jesus, in your love, Father God. No matter what may happen, Father God, that you bring that bond together, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray. Father, we ask you, Lord, for unity in our home, Father. Fathers and shorts and mothers, teach, Father God, as your word says, Father. We ask you, Lord, for unity and oneness, Father, in all homes, Father God. Even if it's just one single parent, Father God, we ask you, Lord, nothing's impossible for our God. You're the God of impossibilities. You're the God that's infinite. So, Father God, we give it over to you. We bring it to your throne of your grace, Father God. And we know that it is done, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the power of families, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for respect. The children respect their families, their parents, Father. You said the came of a child in a way that they should go and they would not be parted from it. Yes. So, Father God, we're standing on your word. We're speaking out on your word, Father God. Anoint the children, Father God. Let them know that they are loved, Father God. So even if they don't have a physical father, they know you, Lord Jesus. You are our father. So, Father God, we ask you, Lord, to let them know you're going to shut her down, Father. It is you and you alone. Father, we ask you, Lord, to lift up to you, not only families, their unity, Father God, anything that they need to do, that you're there with them, Father God. We will also ask you, Lord, that they be able to go to their, their city, their, their neighborhoods, their cities, Father, the county, Father God, and to their schools, Father, and be able to tell others about you, Lord Jesus, your power, Father. Father, we ask you, Lord, to unite the churches, Father God, that they be on one accord, Father, perfect harmony for it, Lord Jesus, in your love, Father, that you're, Jesus, you said you're in the Father, that we are in you, and you're in us. So, Father God, let it be known, Father God, beyond a shadow of doubt, Father, it's you and you alone. Father, we lift up the church leaders, Lord, unite them, Lord, that they be on one accord, Father, that they be able to teach us, Father God, what you and here you teach them, Father, that they are the under shepherd and they teach your servants, Father, your children, your children of God, Father God, your church, Father God, your bride, that we'll be ready and able when you come back and appear in the sky, Father God, that we'll be ready to be caught up with you, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask so that they will perform their duties, Father God, as the Holy Spirit guides them and lead them and teach them, Lord Jesus. We ask so that the, the people, Father, able to survive, Father God, they bring their ties to the so how so that when you meet in your house, Father God, that the leaders may do their necessary duties, Father God. We also lift up you, Lord, the children at school, Father. We lift up the administration, Father, the teachers, Lord. Father, we ask you, Lord, that they do not go away and from what they should be doing, but Father, that the children are our are, are, are future, Lord Jesus. And let them know that they're responsible for our children, Father. They're professions, Father God, to foster our children, give them a positive environment, Lord Jesus. And we also lift up to you, Lord, the bereaved, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, just touch them with your righteous right arm, Father. Those that are that have lost loved ones, Lord Jesus, cover them on every side, Father. We ask you in the name of Jesus, just to continue to be with them, Lord. Let the those that are the um, first responders to you, Lord Jesus. We ask you, Lord, protect them, Lord Jesus, as they go to and fro, Father God. We lift up the firemen, the, the firefighters, Lord. We lift up the first responders. As the, the EMTs, the paramedics, Lord, the doctors, the nurses, Lord Jesus, unite them on one that they have a ministry too, Lord Jesus, ministering those that are in need for a physical help, Lord Jesus, mental, emotional, Father God. Let them be on one accord, Father God. We ask you to protect those, the, the firefighters, protect, Lord, those uh, paramedics, the EMTs, Father. Give them God a little knowledge, understanding, Father. When they go to those sites, Father God, they ask you, Lord, that they have discerning spirit. 
from the Holy Spirit. And if it needs to be into a, uh, another facility, Father God, we ask you that they be able to do it in a timely manner. Father, we ask you these things through the Holy Spirit name of Jesus. Father, we're asking you and thanking you in advance, Father, that you'd be glorified through it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Thank the Lord, amen, for the mighty prayer of intercession on uh, coming from Sister Barbara Harris. We thank and praise the Lord for those who, amen, not just when they're called on uh, in a service, but in their daily lives, amen, are, are intervening in intimacy with the Lord, amen, praying and calling up on the Lord in intercession. Therefore, when they are called up on, amen, they're able to pray that effectual and fervent prayer, amen, on our behalf. We're going to sing a song right here just to uh, build your faith, and then we're going to call up on our own Bishop Brian Harris. Hopefully, he is on the line with us. He will start six and lead us in the second portion of our prayer, but this song says, all in his hands, I put it all in his hands, oh, all in his hands. I put it all in his hands, all of my worries, my problems, I know that he can solve them well. I put it all in his hands, oh, all in his hands. I put it all in his hands, I said, all in his hands. I put it all in his hands, all of my worries, my problems, I know that he can solve them. I put it all in his hands. I said this, 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 and that. I put it all in his hands. I said this, 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 and that. Go down your list. I put it all in his hands. All of my worries, my problems, I know that he can solve them. I put it all in his hands. All oh, this, 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 and that. Yeah. I put it all in his hands, he, she, and them. I put it all in his hands, all of my worries, my problems. I know that he can solve them. I put it all, I put it all, I put it all in his hands. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Whatever it is, go down your list and this, 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 and that. Put all of it in God's hands. We preached on Sunday, casting all of your cares up on him because he careth for you. So at this time, Bishop Harris, star six to unmute. No one else should be unmuted. I think I'm hearing someone, amen's voice. But if you have hit star six, amen, please hit it again to remute yourself because we should not be hearing anyone but Bishop Brian Harris. Amen, Bishop Harris. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're so gracious, so kind to us, a very present help in the time of trouble. We thank you for your protection, your covering peace uh, that is upon us. God, we ask now, that, Lord, that you would keep us and overshadow us in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, just please help us. Um, we're praying, Lord God, for safety and protection. We know that we're living in uh, last days. And uh, we trust and believe, Lord God, that you would keep us. Uh, we see the situation over in Ukraine and uh, around the world. And uh, God, we pray for protection now. We pray for peace now in the name of Jesus. Your peace which surpasses all understanding. Uh, we pray against the evil that's in the world in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you would bring it to naught in the name of the Lord. Uh, God, we pray, Lord. Uh, for our finances, uh, that you would meet every need, uh, that we would uh, uh, lack nothing, Lord God, want for nothing, uh, that all of our needs will be met. We're praying um, that God will supernaturally bless each and every saint of God, child of God, those on this prayer line, those that are connected to you, to your family, uh, that the Lord will bless them uh, financially. We also pray that we will be good stewards over what you have given us. Uh, help us, Lord God, to be good stewards and to uh, use what you've given us well to uh, sow our seeds into good ground and to not be wasteful in the name of Jesus and that you might be glorified in it. Press down, shake it together, run it over. We trust and believe shall men give unto our bosom. Uh, we pray, Lord, for those that are seeking housing and uh, we pray for affordable housing. Uh, bless the saints, Lord God, uh, to uh, own property. Bless the saints of God, Lord God, to... Uh, and then be the lender and not the borrower, bless the saints of God, Lord, be able to live well uh, in their own card house, uh, bless the saints of God, Lord, God, to be uh, sheltered and uh, that all their needs are met, uh, again, that they would want nothing and their peace uh, would be in you. Uh, travel 
in grace and mercy as they go about these jobs out so far uh, in the land travel um, over the airways and highways wherever they go uh, during the spring travel season during summer plans that the saints are making be with them during conferences and conventions that are opening up be with them during tech meetings and revivals that are happening be with the saints of god who are yeah. doing their daily uh, moving about uh, to work and or to the shopping plaza or to a grocery store. Just be with the saints of God. Give them travel with mercy. Favor of the Lord be upon them, I pray even now. Bless the word of God as it goes forth tonight. Let it go forth richly and with anointing. God, yes. in the name of Jesus, as a speaker, speak to them, through them, O oh Lord. Anoint your word. Uh, let it uh, rain down from heaven uh, like dew and set upon Hallelujah, the fields and God that we would be able to receive from it, be nurtured from it, uh, the sincere milk of the word of the Lord, uh, that we will be able to grow thereby in the name of Jesus, that so we'd be built up strong and powerful. Be God by, God by your word. Hallelujah, would strengthen us, O oh God. We thank you for this time of fellowship together with one another, with all the saints of God. What a blessing it is to come together. I like this. We thank you, Lord God, to, uh, that we are strengthened one by another, iron sharpened iron. Uh, we thank you for this fellowship, Hallelujah. for this time together, and for the word that you're bringing together, Hallelujah. even now, for the song that's being sung, for the scripture that's being read. Hallelujah. For the voice that we hear over this uh, prayer line. Be glorified in it all, God, for we glorify you in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Bishop Harry. Hallelujah. 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 Emmanuel Temple. Amen. Apostolic Church in the city of Vallejo, California. Amen. We thank the praise the Lord for that anointed prayer, ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Once again, thanks to Sister Barbara Harris and to you. Amen. For our prayer portion. Now, you notice we did not pray for the sick. I will be doing that at, after the Bible study. We have what we call right here at this altar. And we want you to realize, just like you are in a natural building, a church. Hallelujah. The building is not the church. Hallelujah. It's the body of Christ, the ecclesia. Amen. Those groups are baptized believers by the one spirit went to the body. So you can come forth. Amen. Just right here at this altar. I will meet you at the altar. We will be praying for the sick and also receiving those who want to make sure that they're in this church triumphant, that they're in the Savior's bride because Jesus Christ is soon to come. He came to establish his church in the earth, a body of baptized believers reversing the curse that Adam put on us because in Adam we all died, but through Jesus Christ we're made anew, we're made alive, a whole fresh new nation of people, children of God, beloved, how what manner of love the Father has shown upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Think about that, the sons of God, but that's really who we are. He said he came to his own. They did not receive him, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And that's what we have become if you have received that spirit. So amen. We're going to go into our Bible class. And what we're talking about tonight is the future of the church. But amen. God sees three group of people. You're either in the church because you've been born again of water and of spirit. Hallelujah become a part of the family of God. And those consist of Jews and Gentiles. Yes, there are some Jews. Amen. They call themselves Messianic Jews, but there are some that are shown up born again, just like you and I. Amen. Then God looks at the nation of Israel. We have not taken their place in prophecy. The promises made to Abraham and various other amen uh, uh, beings throughout uh, of Abraham's seed, like King David. David and so forth. All of those promises are going to be fulfilled. But right now it's the Gentiles time. It's the church time. It's a time for grace and for us to come in. But that door is about to be closed when the rapture of the church takes place. And then God once again will turn to the nation of Israel and all those prophecies concerning them.
them will come to pass, praise the Lord. And so uh, uh, we're going to be talking about the future of each one of these groups, the church, the nation of Israel, as well as those who are in the world that never turn to uh, Christ. We're going to let you know what their end is well. So you want to make sure that you're in the church because that's the group, amen, that will be called up to meet him when he comes again. He's coming to remove us out of harm's way, coming to remove us out of harm's way once again, because then shall there be great tribulation as was not up on the world since the world began and there'll never be a time like it. Amen. Afterwards, seven years of devastation up on the earth. The first three are horrific, but the last three and a half of, oh my God, indescribable because there's never been a time like it. So there's nothing to compare it to. Right. But our first two readers are going to be reading. And this is part, it's like you're in my, uh, like you're in my Bible class, because this is from the book we use in our Bible class, but it's mainly scriptures. And it's talking about Hallelujah, the future of the church. But it's talking about John's revelation of the future of the church. Hallelujah. And so our first reader is Sister Latoya Starr, and we're going to ask her to hit star six and begin reading. And following her will be Sister uh, Hazel Owens. Praise the Lord. Both of them are on the West Coast, but first only Sister Latoya Starr should have her phone unmuted so we can hear her very well and not any other disturbances uh, in the background. Amen, Sister Latoya. We're ready for you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Amen. So John's revelation, praise the Lord, John's revelation of the future. The book of Revelation is without doubt the more exciting book ever written for two reasons. First, it presents Jesus in his well-deserved splendor and glory. The first time he came to this earth, it, it was as the suffering Messiah, which is why the Jews rejected him. They did not want a savior to forgive their sins, and give them eternal life. They wanted a Messiah who would who would um, write them um, rid them of their Roman conquerors and give them the blessings promised by the prophets for the kingdom age. But the second time Christ comes, it will be in. everything in the white box yes oh okay okay what i wanted to do as we were reading i wanted to ask a few questions so i want you to be able to tell me two reasons that the book of revelations is without doubt uh one of the more exciting most exciting books ever written. She just gave you two reasons. So if you have paper and pencil, please jot down the two reasons that she uh, told you. Okay, Sister Latoya, you can go ahead. Okay, continue? Okay. Yes. All right, so the second reason this book it's such a blessing. It's because it gives more definitive details about the future and our relationship to, to it than any other book or prophecy in the world. These details encompass the church age, the seven year tribulation period, the glorious appearing, the millennial kingdom, heaven and march of other facts about the future. The importance of revelation cannot be exaggerated for without it many old and new testament prophecies would not be would not be understandable. Unfortunately many teachers and preachers never deal with the book of Revelation. Even some who teach all the other books, books of the Bible. It is as though there is a satanic attack on the credibility of the book to keep God's people from understanding it and being motivated by it. Since the 3rd and 4th century, the Greek form of reading the text allegorically and symbolically was 
because where was I at? Okay, because of this traditional revelation has been in enigma. The reason is simple. You cannot understand this book unless you take it literally the way it was intended. Literally. That is unless the fact of the uh, immediate context, context indicate otherwise. The literal method of interpretation should be applied to this book just as it is for the other books of scripture. In fact, the other way, the promise of a blessing to the reader and those who obey its commandments can be fulfilled is to take Revelations literally. Uh, Revelations 1-3. Otherwise, otherwise, it cannot be understood. And if you do um, do not understand it, you you cannot receive a blessing by reading it. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Latoya. So she has given us uh, two reasons why the book of Revelation is so important. And she also explained how we should take it when we're reading it, because many people try to make it more allegorical, uh, metaphorical, and so forth, and, and try to put other inferences or other meanings into it. Uh, but here we're saying just interpret it just like you would any of the other books of the Bible that you're reading. So we're going to get more into this. But we found out that the book of Revelations it really shows uh, the Lord in his glory, in his splendor, uh, being the great I am, being the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning. Amen. Seeing him in all of his uh, crowned glory. Hallelujah. Whereas in his first advent and in the gospel, uh, we see him coming as the suffering sa savior. We see him born uh, as a babe in a manger. And we found a little bit about him when he was 12 years old. But here, only in the book of Revelations, do we see the Lord himself speaking about himself uh, in his majesty and glory. Okay, our next reader is going to be Sister Hazel Owens. Sister Hazel, would you start six? and uh, finish telling us what John the Revelator had to say about, amen, the future. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise um, the Lord. Okay. In Revelation 1, Jesus is seen walking among the lamp lampstands or churches. We already know that the church is to be the light of the world and is entrusted with one primary task fulfilling the Great Commission to take the gospel to all the world. The threefold outline of Revelation is found in Revelation 119, where John is instructed to write about one, the things which you have seen, meaning the vision in its entirety, two, the things which are the church age, and three, the things which take place after these things, which is the future. We shall look briefly at the things that are and the things that will be. The things that are. Revelation 2 to 3 have to do with the church age, beginning with the first century, which is called the apostolic age. Though the apostles were dead before the end of the first century, they are mentioned in the message to the church of Ephesus. The Lord's letters to the seven churches in Revelation 2 to 3 were written to more than just the seven churches listed, for there were thousands of churches by AD 95 when Revelation was written. Most literist prophecy scholars believe that these letters apply to all churches existing in that day and all through the ages. In each letter, the Lord challenges all to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Notice the plural tense. These letters were to be circulated among all the churches, and indeed, we can see that they are applicable to churches in any age. 
they are also there are also some who hold the view that these seven churches represent a progression in the history of the church beginning with the first century and continuing through today prophecy scholar and author gary cohen describes it in this way the theory that the seven churches of revelation two to three are pro prophetical that they represent seven consecutive periods in a <laughs> ecclesiastical history seems to have been suggested by some of the words of the martyr Victorinus, Bishop of Petal, who died in uh, AD 303. This belief is held today does not deny that at the same time the seven churches are also historical and representative, it asserts that the prophetical element is in addition to these other elements and wholly compatible with them. Thus, it beholds the seven congregations. One, historically, as, as historically existent at the time of John's writing in AD 95 to 96. Number two, it beholds the seven congregations as representing the entire church through the seven types of local churches which shall exist throughout the dispensation. And three, it beholds the seven congregations as prefiguring seven aspects of the professing church, which would, which would successively rise into prominence before Christ's second coming. And this is where- uh, Amen. Very I good, mean, very I good. Mean, We're gonna come back to you in just a moment but what we want you to consider okay. from what she was reading there the things that are and it tells us uh in revelations two to three have to do with the church age beginning with the first century and so all of these apostolic churches that they are listing are representing different ages that's what most scholars think many times you hear people say we're in the church of Laodicea uh, because of the atmosphere and the climate of the church because the church of uh, Laodicea you know they was rich they felt like they didn't have any need of anything and and they were uh more into carnal and materialistic type things and the Lord let them know that they were rich, they were naked, they were blind, and so forth. And so uh, most people think that we're in that age uh, dispensation for as the church is concerned, for as being lukewarm, and so forth. And the Lord is outside knocking on the door trying to get into the church. And so some people take it literally. She gave us the three ways uh, through history, historically taking it that way in existence during the time that John was writing to these different churches. And then the second was representing the entire church throughout the seven types of local churches which shall exist. And then the future that they would even exist in the future. And one church might have two or three of these different characteristics. You know, one church might have the characteristics of the church at Ephesus as well as uh, uh, having the uh, maybe the characteristics of the church of Smyrna is not that one church has to have just one of those characteristics as well. And so now we're going to go on. Uh, but uh, what I would like to, for you to know is that those seven churches can represent existing churches during John's time, but they also represent uh, churches that exist in these ages that we're in now as well. Praise the Lord. Okay, Sister Hazel, you can go on and give them the seven Excellent. periods are generally given. Excellent. Okay. The seven periods are generally given approximately as followed. I know this is a lot of information. I imagine we'll get uh, it in writing or we may have it in writing. Um, Ephesus, that's the apostol apostolic church. And that was from 30 to 100 AD. And then um, evangelist, uh, um, Prince, do I read AD 30 to 100 or 300 to 100 AD? Do I put the AD in front or back? Oh, you can read it just like it is there. 
Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, the, sec the second period is Smyrna, the persecuted church, A.D. 100 to 313. The third church, Pergamos, the state church, A.D. 313, 313 to 590. The fourth period is Thyatira, which means it's the papal church, like the Pope, okay? Um, that's A.D. 590 to 1517. Mm -hmm. The fifth church is Sardis, excuse me, which is the Reformed Church, A.D. 1517 to 1730. The sixth church is Philadelphia, the Missionary Church, A.D. 7. 1930 to 1900. Uh, and then the seventh period is the Laodicea, the apostate church, which is A.D. 1900 until whenever the Lord comes, I imagine. It says question mark. Mm -hmm. From 1900 to question mark. And although this time-honored belief that Christ's message to the seven churches takes a prophetic look, at the seven stages of church history has never been held unanimously. It is held by most pre-millennialists. Even Stephen Schaff, the writer of the classic eight-volume set, History of the Christian Church, accepts this that position. The first three churches have passed off the pages of history, but the last four are living concurrently, for we have these four kinds of churches in our world today. The message to all is the same. Be thou faithful unto death. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very Amen. much. Uh, when you notice when you're reading in the book of Revelations, uh, those first three chapters, well, the first chapter, the Lord is introducing himself and, and uh, we see him with the hair like lambs, wool and the feet like brass, and he's in the midst of the candlesticks and so forth. And he says, I am he that was, uh, that is, and that is to come. Behold, I'm alive forevermore. And he uh, states all about his being from the beginning even unto the present and into the future. But in the second chapters, uh, second and third chapters, when he's addressing the different churches, telling them uh, what is commendable about them, but also what uh, he has um, uh, against them, what they're not doing right. He wants us to do it all as according to his word, not be good at one thing, but then lacking in something else. So he, he addresses the positive first, and then he says, but I got something against you. I, I see you doing this. So we have to check out our lives because we fit into these ages as well as individuals. You know, are we like the Atlanta Oceans? Are we more like the Church of Philadelphia that had the love and so forth? For, uh, are we like the Nicolaitans, uh, you know, the lofty, high-minded folk uh, that uh, had more of a mind of position, you know, I'm a bishop, I got this title, I got that title, and all of you are subject to me, so where are you falling? And he says uh, the, the first two ages are past, or the first three, but the last four all of them existing at the same time. Like I said, one church might have the very characteristics and you as an individual might have those characteristics, but he still had something against them. And so we want to whatever, clean up what we messed up as the uh, uh, Canton spiritual saying, I'm going to clean up what I messed up. Amen. Start my life over again. So that's what we have to do. Amen. Only acknowledge thy sin. Only acknowledge thy fault. Amen. Be transparent. Come out with your hands up. You get shot down with your hands in your pocket when the police stop you. You get shot down if your hands are to the side. You might just be touching your cell phone and boom, boom, boom. You did. Oh, we thought that was something else. Hallelujah. So come out with your hands up. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. So we want to be examining ourselves as we read about these various churches as well. Hallelujah. And so now, Sister Debbie Williams is going to talk to us 
about the things that will be because Sister Hazel was talking about the things that are and was talking about those churches. But after Revelation 3, and I think verse number 21, that is the last time that he addresses the church, the body of Christ in the book of Revelations. Up, uh, up until then, he's talking to those churches and he said, he that hath the ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches, unto the churches. The Spirit is talking to the church. Amen. The Spirit is talking in the church. Amen. The church is what's in the earth is holding back gross evil. He that letteth will letteth until he's taken out of the way. Amen. He that hinder will hinder until he's taken out of the way. That's the church. Amen. You think it's bad now. You watch how it's going to be once, amen, the church is raptured out of here. Amen. And all hell, as they say, will break loose because there will be no restraint. Amen. From the evil, the devil's coming out of his place, knowing his time is short. Amen. You know, he got a little while and he's going to wreak havoc during those seven years. Amen. And so, of tribulation. So after uh, Revelation 3.21, no more addressing. It might say he that has to enter here, let him hear. But it does not say anymore he that has to enter here, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Because after that, amen, there'll be no time to change your mind. The sun has come and you've been left behind. And so God will be addressing the nation of Israel. And that's when a hundred and a uh, hundred and um uh, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes will be, amen, sealed in their forehead, protected, just like we're protected by the Holy Ghost now, amen, so it's a total of 144,000, 12,000 from each one of the tribes, and so when we talk about all Israel being saved, it's not talking about everybody that's the Jew or everybody's in Israel going to be saved, but amen, representation from all those tribes will be saved. They will be sealed. And when those horrible things and horrific things are happening during tribulation, they will be protected. And they will become, amen, the preachers uh, during, during that time, amen, during that uh, 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 seven years of tribulation. They're going to be the ones that spread in the word. Hallelujah. But amen. If you can't be saved in this time of grace, when you can be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, have your sins washed away, how you think you're going to, amen, be saved during a time when you can't buy a sale unless you take the mark of the beast. And you can see the one world government forming now, which will be ruled by the Antichrist. And you can see the one world religion forming. Amen. As a matter of fact, after you get through with this program, just Google Abraham Brick uh, Family House. Amen. In, uh, on an island, Abu Dhabi, they are building right now. It's almost completely done. Beautiful, beautiful uh, places. But they built three structures, one for the Muslims, one for the Jews, and one for the Christians. The Christians are not allowed to have a cross Amen. Anywhere on that building, at least not from the outside where it can be viewed, that is not allowed uh, uh, in, in that area. Nothing that represents, amen, Christ. You can't be seen outside that. Uh, you got to hide your Bible when you come out that door and so forth. But they're claiming that this is a one world religion and, and brotherhood and fraternity and coming together and peace, love and happiness. But amen, the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. That will be the false prophet. Amen. And, and, and uh, the Pope is uh, right behind it. He signed off on it. And then uh, uh, some um, uh, uh, person of the uh, um, of the synagogue, hallelujah, long name I can't pronounce, but they're coming together. But you know, the Bible lets us know these things would happen in the last days. But but you're not going to want to have your head chopped off because you refuse to take the mark of the beast. So why should you die, amen, uh, for the name of Jesus when he has already died and shed his blood and you can just come on and be baptized in his name, have your sins washed away and be filled with the Holy Ghost. But Sister Debbie's going to read to us uh, some some of the things that are, amen, the things which will be, the things which are to come, amen. So listen, amen, and try to take some notes. And yes, I will, if I have to, forward this information uh, to you for those who want it. Okay, Sister Debbie, you can start, the, just unmute your mic. Yeah. Immediately after the seventh church is described and just before God's judgments, are poured out. We see John, a member of the church, taken up into heaven. 
Revelations 4, verses 1 through 2, while we could not build the truth of the pre-tribulation, the rapture, on this single passage, it certainly fits in with the many passages described in it. 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 58, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through verse 18, and see chapter 17 on the rapture. The events of the last days will include the destruction of Babylon, governmentally, religiously, and commercially. This will be followed by the glorious second appearing of Jesus Christ, who will throw the Antichrist and the false prophets into the lake of fire. Christ will, will then set up the millennial kingdom and Satan will be bound for a thousand years. At the end of that time, he will be released to tempt the nations once again before being cast alive into the lake of fire forever. Then right. comes the great white throne judgment. Revelations chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. After which, that all true believers will be cast, I'm sorry, after which the all the unbelievers will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation closes with the vision of what heaven will be like. It is the most incredible picture of eternity ever presented. And it is all available to those who receive Jesus. More details about this will be given in future chapters. But for now, we call attention to the fact that Jesus will come quickly, meaning that he is coming will be suddenly, and he will reward every man according to his work, stated in Revelation chapter 22, verse number 12. Don't miss his coming or the reward for life for a lifetime of faithful service, for those rewards will last forever and ever. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the king. We hope that you understood what she just read. These are the things that we are looking forward to. We're not trying to uh, pronosticate. It's in the word of God. Hallelujah. And this is not Tales from the Crypts. This is not Stephen King. This is not Alfred Hitchcock. This is the word of God. It's telling you and Jesus told you when you see all these things, when you see the pestilence, when you see the pandemics, when you see the earthquakes, amen, happening more and more frequently, when you see 6.0s and 7.0s and 8 point somethings, and even we've had a 9.0, when you see, amen, the earth quaking and the earth is in travail, moaning and groaning, and volcanoes are erupting, and hurricanes and swarms of tornadoes, and we got swarms of bees, and we got swarms, hallelujah, of all kind of locusts, we've got all these things in the heavens and in the earth, some uh, signs and the sun, the moon, the stars. Jesus said, when you see all these things, even in society, men with men and women uh, with women working that which is unseemly, and they're now trying to erase gender. They're trying to erase gender. They said, don't tell the little babies, don't tell the little children, you are a boy, you are a girl, you are a male, you are a female. No, just let them grow into what they feel like they are, and your body ain't got to match what you really are. The devil is a liar. See, God and the Satan is trying to disrupt God's creation, especially, amen, the godly seed, the godly seed. Amen. If he can't get the young people to kill themselves, he's trying to get them, amen, to mitch match where they cannot reproduce and bring forth more godly seed. This is, amen, uh, incubated in hell. I said this is incubated in hell. All this is going on and all this being also oh, loving 
lovey-dovey and ecumenical and you've got a right now. You ain't got nothing but a right to do nothing but do right and do what God said was right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so they're trying to, 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 to twist their minds and all their sin. And little kids, you know, watching commercials and they see the two men kissing and, well, mommy and daddy, but why did daddy, daddy, uh, what is this, you know? And so their little minds are like sponges when they're young. They can, they, they develop. That's when they grow the dendrites, amen, to hold information. And what kind of dendrites and what kind of information are they gaining in their knowledge? Hallelujah. Uh, uh, we're looking at these things and two women together. And so it's confusion. It's confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, but we just read here and Sister yeah. Debbie just wow. read to us that these events of the last days will include the destruction of Babylon, amen, which is governmental. It will destroy all religions and all commercial. Hallelujah. It's going to destroy all that because God's going to set up a righteous kingdom. Amen. There's so much injustice. We got unfair weights. Hallelujah. Amen. You buy something and you might get, amen, eight ounces and somebody else buy it and they get the whole 16. Amen. But you got your eight because the color of your skin. Amen. You you pulled over. Amen. And you're going to get all beat up and you might not make it with your life. Amen. But the other person just get a warning. They don't even get a ticket. Amen. So it's so much injustice, hallelujah, on yeah. every level. But God's yeah. going to come hallelujah. and set things in order. Yeah. He's going to set it right. Yeah. Amen. The yeah. song said there's a whole lot of people going home by the signs of the time. It won't be long in the twinkling of an eye. We'll all be gone. So that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting for that moment. And you can't do yeah. a whole lot in a moment. So while you have time now is the accepting time. He's saying the day you hear my heart, don't harden your heart hallelujah so we're gonna have an altar call in just a minute right after the ellis's amen give us a little information about those three groups of people in bible prophecy but you just heard about the future of the church amen needs to rule and reign with the lord because when we come back at the end of that tribulation after that seven year period we're gonna come back hallelujah riding those white horses amen dressed in that white linen hallelujah she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes riding six white horses oh no we're gonna be right wearing white linen and riding those horses and we're gonna rule and reign with the lord and he's gonna set up his millennial kingdom for a thousand years amen the antichrist and the false prophet they're gonna be kicked in the lake of fire hallelujah satan ain't going into it right then he's going into a bottomless pit where he will be chained for a thousand years but at the end of the thousand years you know god does not want people serving him because amen he's ruling with it ruling them with a rod of iron and during the millennium ain't nobody gonna be messing up ain't nobody gonna be sinning amen because the lord amen we're gonna be ruling with a rod of iron hallelujah nothing but righteousness prevailing but during those thousand years there will be some people uh that come on the scene and that amen will will, will go astray so when the enemy is let out of that pit at the end of that thousand years he's gonna go up and around the nations and it's gonna be a whole host of people that come up against jerusalem trying to come up and destroy amen the lord and what he has set up and his rule and his reign amen but this ain't gonna really be a fight because the lord's gonna destroy him with the words of his mouth amen just a mighty nuclear amen weapon force coming out of his mouth that same voice that said let there be light and there was light before there was a sun, moon, or stars. That's what's going to come out of his mouth and destroy, obliterate them. Amen. That's why Peter said, since these things, everything, the silver, the gold, all the elements are going to melt. They're going to be destroyed with a fervent heat. Amen. What you going to exchange your soul for? Amen. When it's all, amen, going to be destroyed. There's going to be a whole new heaven and a whole new earth. He said, what manner of people ought ye to be? Saying that these things are going to be destroyed. They're going to be dissolved. Hallelujah. So we set our affections on things which are where? Above, above, hallelujah, where they're not going to rust, they're not going to 
of decay. Amen. But he's coming to take us out of harm's way. He has saved us. Amen. From the wrath to come. Oh, you don't want to have to go through God's wrath, through God's anger. But Isaiah, hallelujah, 26, 19 uh, through 22 said, the Lord is coming out of his place to judge the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, for their evil, hallelujah, for their, amen, horrible ways, amen, they think they're getting bad, but oh no, he's coming, amen, to, uh, to, 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 to judge them for their iniquity, but he says, come my people, come my people, let me hide you for a moment, there's that moment again, there's that atomos, amen, there's that twinkling of an eye, hallelujah, indivisible amount of time, I'm gonna hide you, huh? Amen. I'm going to hide you. Now you see me. Now you don't. I'm up in heaven already. That's why I said pray that you be counted worthy to escape all these things that are coming up on the earth and stand. Here I stand. Amen. Before the throne. Amen. Before the son of man. Just like that. And somebody said just like that. Woo. Just like that. I'm here. I'm here. Standing before the throne. Tell somebody just be there. Just be there. Don't miss your moment. Give me one moment in time. Amen. That one moment in time, hallelujah, is when Jesus comes and said, come my people. Oh, I'm here already. Thank you, Lord. Just be there. Just be there. I'm getting excited. Let us go back and get these Ellis's, amen, to read us about these three group of people in Bible prophecy. Amen. We don't know how they're going to start out, but uh, uh, Elder, Brother Ellis uh, and, and Sister Ellis, amen, whichever one's going to start out first, start six and uh, and read nice and loud for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Scripture, praise the Lord. Scripture speaks of three classes of people throughout prophecy and history. We find all three in 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 10, verse 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. King James Version. Up until the time of Abraham, all people were Gentiles, including Adam, Enoch, and Noah. There were saved Gentiles, such as Adam, Seth, Noah, and Shem. And there were unsaved Gentiles, such as Cain, Lamech, and Nimrod. Women. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thus, first man was a Gentile. And Gentiles have continued to exist throughout the entire span of human history. Amen. You can continue. Amen. Okay. Uh, when God called Abraham to become a nation, Abraham became the first Hebrew Jew or Israelite. His grandson was Jacob. Mm -hmm. His name was changed to Israel. Genesis 32, 24 through 28. Jacob had had two had two sons. Twelve. Who became had twelve. Mm -hmm. Who became the heads of, of the twelve tribes of Israel, they became Jewish nation, and since then the human race has been divided. And, and to, to, to Jews and Gentiles, mm -hmm. there are saved Jews and unsaved Jews, even as Jews and Gentiles, there are, what's the wrong one? You know, Say even Gentiles. Even Israel is God's elect nation, though whom he brought salvation to all mankind, began with Father Abraham and will continue as a distinct entry throughout the rest of history. The church is the body of Christ, which has begun on the day of Pentecost and will go and will go to heaven 
in the in the rapture, mm -hmm. it's makeup, it's makeup faults. It's different, it's different from from Jews, from Gentiles and Jews. In the in that it is the only spiritual entry is composed of only saved Jews and Gentiles, which, which, wow, well, I can't hardly really read it. Wow, well, it's true. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Well, that, well, that is true that the human institution will know as the church. Mm hmm. Exchange elements of unbelievers. The true, the true church is made up of only genuine, genuine, genuine believers in Christ, though their Savior. The church is also a temporary. It, does, it did not exist before its birth at Pentecost. It will, it will, it will, it will, it will come to an uh, abrupt end mm -hmm. at the at the rapture. Thus, thus those saved. During the tribulation. During, during tribulation and millennial are at a part of the church. So these people will become saved by believing the name, the same. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. And we apologize. Amen. We know that. That printing uh, was a little bit small, but hey, amen, you did an excellent job there. And so I'm just going to re-emphasize real quickly, and then we're going to have our prayer for the sick. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Ellis and Sister Ellis. That was wonderful. So they let you know these three groups of people can be found in uh, this particular scripture in 1 Corinthians 10 and 32, uh, give it lets us know that um, it mentions the Jews, it mentions the Gentiles, and then it mentions the church. And so we have the Jews, the Gentiles, and the church, or we could say the the, the Jews, uh, the the world, and the and the church. Hallelujah! And it talked about those who were uh, before Abraham, and, uh, but they were found righteous in the in the eyes of the Lord. And then they talked about once the covenant was made with Abraham, that began a man, uh, 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 the Jewish nation or the Israelites, uh, talking about uh, Jacob having the 12 sons and uh, the 12 tribes of Israel after his name was changed to Israel. And then that's what we have existing still today. Isn't that something? And even though they were scattered abroad for over 2,000 years, hallelujah, after, this is after uh, after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ, and they came in and destroyed, and, and the Jews were scattered. It was said they would be uh, according to prophecy. And for over all uh, years and years, hallelujah, they were scattered, and then a nation was born. Amen. The Lord began to bring them back in May 14, 1948. They were reestablished as a nation. And so that's when we can start counting because the Lord said the generation that saw that come to pass, the generation that saw the fig tree bud, that it would not pass away until all things be fulfilled. What all things? Amen. All of this concerning, amen, the Jews, all of this concern up to the rapture, up to the rapture. Rapture, amen. That all things would be fulfilled, including the tribulation, is going to all going to be fulfilled during that generation's time. And so, a generation is about eighty years. So, really, we're almost living on borrowed time for these things for the rapture to take place. 
and these things be fulfilled. Amen. Because 1948, that was when the fig tree came back together. The nation of Israel was reestablished. Now their language was reestablished. Their land was uh, reformed. Hallelujah. Just so many prophecies talking about what would happen to them in the end time have all come to pass. Amen. So we know uh, uh, they've blossomed like a, a rose, the desert, a swamp, amen, that was infested and had nothing growing, now produces all the citrus, hallelujah, amen, for almost all of Europe. Uh, great things have happened because the Lord, amen, they have military, amen, in reading Ezekiel about the Valley of Dry Bones, that's representing the nation of Israel coming together, standing up, being a mighty army, and now, amen, their military is second to none, and so all these prophecies have come to pass that lets us know that Jesus Christ is coming very, very soon. So the end of the church started at Pentecost, ends at the rapture. When we're caught up to meet him in the air, we go up to the judgment seat of Christ to get our rewards, not to see if we are saved or not, because we're going to be in heaven, but just to see what kind of crowns, amen, and rewards you're going to get. While we're doing that on the earth, great tribulation, as was not, is going to be going on, and then the marriage supper of the Lamb, amen while we're up there and then we come back amen gloriously with the lord amen at the end of that seven year tribulation and then the millennial reign starts for a thousand years after the false prophet amen and the false uh, uh and the antichrist are thrown into the lake of fire satan is bound for a thousand years amen and we rule and reign with christ throughout that thousand years it's going to be peace hallelujah and, and, and nothing killing nothing amen so it's going to be glorious but that's the end of what happens and then at the end of the millennium is the white throne judgment and the rest of the dead are raised hallelujah and and they're judged but all of those people are going into the lake of fire so don't be uh uh, misinformed, don't let the enemy trick you, amen, don't even let the enemy think you, oh, well, why don't you just kill yourself because, amen, then everything will be all right, oh, no, it won't be because if you have not made your peace calling and election sure, you're going to lift your eyes in hell, tormented in the flame like the man was in the Bible, hallelujah, he said he went to hell and, and he said, I'm tormented in these flames, and then after that, at the white throne judgment, death and hell going to give up their dead and then you go to the lake of fire, which is the second death. But amen, the Bible says, blessed and holy are they to have part in the first resurrection, in that rapture, hallelujah, because over them, the second death has no power. Amen, there's not gonna be a second death for you, hallelujah. Amen, you die in Christ, you're present with the Lord. Then, amen, you get a new resurrected body when he comes back to get you. You call up in to meet the Lord in the air and forever so shall we be with the Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. Amen. Wasn't this a glorious study? Wasn't this a glorious study? We hope that that cleared up maybe some questions that you have had uh, about the future. So we now know the future of the church, the nation of Israel, as well as unbelievers. Amen. Amen. So we want to invite you, uh, those on the prayer line, you know the number to call, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you don't know the number, the person that invited you, ask them, how do I get in touch with the lady? Amen, because I want you to get in touch with me, amen, because you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, except a man is born again of water and of spirit. He cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So you need to repent, be godly, sorrowful, have a desire to turn around, because if you just get baptized, in Jesus' name, but you haven't really repented, you're just getting wet, hallelujah, but you want to have repented, have in your mind and in your heart, I want to do better, and we're not saying that you got power to do better, because if you had power to do better, you would have already done it, but you have got a design of mind to turn and go the other way, you want to stop, amen, the, the, the what you're doing, you want to stop, amen, doing those things, you know they're not right, but you're like Paul, he said, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver? me from the body of this death. I want to start doing good, but evil is always on my track. Always, amen, present. And then I want to start doing good. And so I can start doing good for the bad. Amen. Keep 
coming up. Amen. I got stinking thinking as a claw in my mind, a monkey on my back. He said, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Thanks be unto God who can give you the victory, who can yeah. break the chains and destroy amen. the yoke. So amen. amen. If you're watching this over YouTube, if you would go to evangelistprince.com, there's a contact button and you can send me an email with your name and number and I will amen. get back in touch with you. Amen. Go over these scriptures with you, direct you, amen, to a church in your uh, uh, area where you can be baptized in the name of Jesus. Don't just go to any church, amen, and don't just ask anybody, will you baptize me in Jesus' name? Because there are some hypocrites out there, amen, that will tell you that, yeah, 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 we, we, we do it in Jesus' name, and they do not do it in Jesus' name. So don't just take a amen. man's word for what you want to know. You wow. want to hear it for yourself, my dear, dear beloved brother or sister, upon the confession of your faith amen hallelujah and, and all the words that they read over you uh, and you want to hear them say I indeed baptize you in the name of jesus yes, christ yes, hallelujah lord. for the remission lord. of your sin you want to hear that you want to hear them call out the name of jesus you can say it yourself before you go under the water in jesus name hallelujah because what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of jesus neither is there salvation in any other for there's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. No other person, but also no other name. They put the emphasis on no other name given under heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that is the name. Call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it simple to understand? Nobody tried to make it confusing. Nobody messed it up. Amen. But the devil got in somebody. Hallelujah. Had him change it. Amen. When they were doing it the right way from the beginning. Nothing in the Bible, but baptism in Jesus name but we amen love you amen and God loves you hallelujah he came all the way down shed his blood got in our body so he could shed some innocent blood so you can have your sins washed away he was tempted in all points like as we so God he can feel you he can feel you he can feel what you're going through he, amen. he knows what it's like he says a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief hallelujah so those of you that are suffering with depression amen God was a man of Jesus was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. So he knows what it's like, amen, to grieve and to be hurt, to be broken, to feel lonely, amen. Sometimes you feel lonely and got no reason for feeling lonely, but amen, that just sits in. Sometimes it can be a chemical thing with your body chemistry. Sometimes it can be a hormonal thing, amen. Seek help, amen, hallelujah, for your condition, amen. Sometimes you just need a change in your diet, but above all, seek the Lord, amen, and call up on him because he is able uh, to change and make a difference. Hallelujah. And stay in the house of God. Stay in the word of God. Amen. Get off the internet and all that mess. Hallelujah. That's infiltrating your thinking and your subliminal messages are coming into your mind. Hallelujah. And you got those earphones on and it's getting into your psyche. And then when you least expect it, here comes some crazy thought or feeling even. Amen. Suicidal. Amen. And so let's break a loose from those unclean spirits. Quit opening those doors because you are opening doors, amen, for those unclean spirits, amen, to come in, infestate and infest. Hallelujah. You can't eat just one. No such thing as one roach. Amen. If you saw one roach as a whole hundred more somewhere infesting and brewing. So don't even start taking any of it in. Watch who you talk to, young people, who you hang with. Hallelujah. And God made a male and female, created he them in his image and after his likeness. And that's how he made you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he loves you just like he made you and you're nothing in between. Amen. But you are Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Male or female created for God's glory. Hallelujah. And you're going to do great and mighty things. So don't let the devil mess up what God has planned for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Those that are on the phone, if you happen to have a guest or a visitor, somebody's never been down in the name of Jesus, we ask you to repent of your sins right now. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, so you can hit star six and just give us your name. Hallelujah. Let us know that you want to know the Lord better. You want to make sure that you're ready for that coming that's about to happen, that call come up hither. Amen. She read to us about John. 
in chapter four, amen. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You got to be in the spirit and the spirit got to be in you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he said, I heard a voice as of it were a trumpet. Same as First Thessalonians 4, 16, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ rise first. But with John, he said, immediately, instantly, I was in heaven. Amen. I heard the voice of a trumpet talking and immediately I'm in the spirit and I'm up in heaven and a throne is sitting in front of me. So hallelujah. That's how quick it's going to be with the rapture. You might be driving down 65 interstate or 405 interstate. Come up here. You up there standing in front of the throne of God with all the other saints of God. Hallelujah. You just already there. Amen. In thought time. In thought time. That's what. That's how God's time is compared to our time. Just think one of our days. I mean, one day of God is a thousand years a thousand years, not a day, but a thousand years of our time is just one day. Amen. In God's time. So you see how quick it is? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we love you. Amen. Anybody want to star six? Anybody want to star six? Amen. Get your name in on the prayer. Amen. That we're about to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying for all your unsaved loved ones, for your children, each one on this paper. Amen. We're praying for each one that is, amen, on the line. We're praying for your health and your healing. Amen. At this time, thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we praise you. We give you honor and we give you the glory for you alone are God, exalted above all else. Beside you, there's no savior, there's no intercessor, and there is no healer. Lord God, we ask for healing of cancer. We pray that you dissolve every cancer cell. Remember, yay. Hallelujah, Hagler. Remember D. Rogers, oh God. We pray that you remember Mary Wells, oh God. Hallelujah, we pray that you remember Karen Coffey. We pray, Lord God, for Barbara Thomas, hallelujah. Angela Cortez, you know where these cancers are in their body, hallelujah. Some have had brain cancer, some have had thyroid, liver, breast, oh God. Various parts of the body, whether it's stage one, two, three, or four, and anybody else on this line. Lord God, we pray that you would dissolve those cancerous cells. We thank and praise you that you have heard us. You will answer us and show great and mighty things which we know it's not. So do those things on behalf of these people. And Lord, we wait to hear testimonies that you have sent your word to heal and to deliver them. We pray, Lord God, for Angela Cortez's son with that spinal cord injury. We pray for everyone with diabetes be healed, that their insulin levels, that their pancreas would function properly, that their A1C would be in normal range, their glucose, oh God, in the name of Jesus, type 1 and 2, we pray for Elder Bell, we pray for little Taylor, Lord God, we pray how you for the McIntyre family, Lord, we curse every generational curse of diabetes, hallelujah, that is up on us in Jesus' name, we thank if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, old things have passed away, and all things become new. We pray for, Lord, these that are on the phone, these that are on Zoom, and these that will watch, Lord God, this taping later dates, oh God, that the healing virtue and power of the bomb of Gilead would still be available to heal and to deliver them because of the voice of God that goes forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Breathe into their nostrils, oh God, a healing virtue. Hallelujah. Even as that voice went into the tomb of Lazarus and come forth and everything that it calls him to die had to be rehealed and renewed in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, hallelujah for every generational curse to be reversed in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for those who are in bereavement, even as they have been prayed, but we call out the name of Jack Husted, Pat Swansea, Damian Collier, Karen Ray's family, and Rita Pate in the death of her husband, oh God, we pray pray, hallelujah, that you have given them the ultimate healing because they have been delivered out of these bodies of this death, hallelujah, into bodies, Lord God, hallelujah, not made by hands, eternal in the heavens that you have prepared for them on that day, oh God, we pray, hallelujah, for the first responders, their safety, even as they have been prayed for already, we pray for those in the nursing home, Sister Joyce Sanchez, Harriet Atkinson, Kathy Morgan, and 
and Alonzo Stanley. We pray, Lord God, for their safety, their protection, their peace of mind, Lord God. We care for their good health care, hygiene, Lord God, good dietary, amen, good dietary uh, food, nutritious food, oh God. We pray, oh God, how do they have their needs tend to, Lord God, with their personal articles. We pray that you protect their belongings and don't let folks steal from them in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you bind and blind every thief that would rob an old person of, Lord God, what they have and what their children have brought and given unto them or what they have obtained. Lord God, hallelujah, we pray for the increase, Lord God, hallelujah, of their health, Lord God, that you would strengthen them, that you, Lord God, hallelujah, would cause, Lord God, uh, for all infection to leave their bodies, oh God, for all inflammation that causes pain and swelling to leave their bodies, that every nerve that's suppressed would be relieved, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you touch every peripheral nerve into the arms and neck, Lord God, hallelujah, the, the limbs, oh Oh God, we pray that you release those hallelujah nerves, Lord God, that they can have a good night's rest in the name of Jesus. Send forth your healing grace in Jesus' name. We pray for eyes, Lord God, that you would deliver, amen, Martin F. Prince, and that you would deliver Ruth Ross and anybody else that's suffering, Lord God, hallelujah, with eye problems, Lord God, astigmatism, cataracts, glaucoma, Lord God, let the pressure in the eyes be right in the name of Jesus. Heal the cornea, Lord God, of any scarring, Lord God. God, we pray that you heal the eyes from the outside to the inside, the cornea, the retina, Lord God, the optic nerves, oh God, in the name of Jesus, let them see men as men, trees as trees, A's as A's, B's as B's, oh God, we give you praise Thank right you. now, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, oh God, we come against those, oh, every addicted spirit, every obsessive spirit, every spirit of craving and addiction over oh, alcohol and drugs, oh God, God, we pray for healing for Claudia, for Gino, for Jennifer, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, Lord God, we ask that you would touch their minds, touch their hearts, make, Lord God, whatever their habit, bitch or is, Lord God, make it a stench in their nostrils, a poison in their mouth, a cramping in their belly, help them to detest it instead of desire it, in the name of Jesus, turn it around, we know you can turn it around, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, we pray for Terrell, we ask you bind up those broken bones from its fall, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the arm, the ribs, the leg, wherever brokenness is, bind it up. Lord, take that ringing out of Michael's ears and heal his calf pain in Jesus' name. Heal Camel's elbow pain in Jesus' name. All pain, we command you to go down in Jesus' name. The blood shed it up side. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Command pain, the very root, the very cause, that the nerves be released. Oh God, block it and stop. Topic, Father God, in the name of Jesus, let it not be transferred anymore. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we pray for Pastor Merritt, Lord God. We pray for good kidney function. We pray, oh God, how you get your cause a miracle, a creative miracle, Lord God. Revive, Lord, kidneys, that the cretin levels be right. Hallelujah, the re uric acid, Lord God, be complete uh, and, and in balance, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Cause the uh, uh, kidneys to filter properly, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Curse any kind of growth up on the kidneys, Lord God. We curse, amen renal failure. We curse, oh God, and command it to go now in the name of Jesus. You toxify the blood. Hallelujah. Any uh, excess fluids that have settled, Lord God, hallelujah, around the heart, around, Lord God, the abdomen, anywhere in the body that you would shrink all swelling, cause the fluids to flow out of their body, Lord, that they cause no harmful effect. Amen. To the breast of the body, we pray for Elder Burbeck in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all gout, all gout out pain, all gout inflammation in the name of Jesus. Let it pour out of their bodies, touch bladders, oh God, cause them to drain properly. We rebuke you, um, urinary tract infection. We rebuke all bladder infections, touch the kidneys, oh God, touch the heart, oh God, the entire cardiovascular systems. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray that you make pacemakers stay in right rhythm, oh God, the rhythm of life, oh God. We pray that hearts beat correctly. We pray over every valve, 
all and every chamber of the hearts, oh God, for a good heart function, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we pray that you continue to heal a mere skin, oh God, paint its own new skin, how you the epidermis, the dermis, and all the underlying tissues. We pray for Aaron, Lord, that you bind up his wound, that you whack lap up all infection out of his body that none remain that his bowels move properly oh God through the colon through Lord God hallelujah the small intestines oh God hallelujah there be no blockage no hindrances also sister Lynette oh God hallelujah let her continue to move properly Lord God not too loose not too tight oh God in the name of Jesus hallelujah let your blood cover let your blood cover let your blood cover let your blood cover the colon the intestines you remove all impacted feces oh god dissolve it in the name of jesus we pray lord god that you deliver all back pain remember sister sandra spratlin in jesus name we ask you to straighten out what's crooked dissolve lord god fill up every hole hallelujah in the spinal cord in the name of jesus dissolve every cyst in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah we rebuke all bleeding hallelujah of the digestive tract lord god we ask that you would heal up any ulcers, any polyps, any type of growth in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We come against Crohn's in the name of Jesus. We come against diverticulitis and every digestive disorder in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Dissolve those bone spurs, oh God, that they cause no more pain on that heel, on that shoulder, on that knee in Jesus' name. Remember, Patricia Pohl cause her blood pressure to be in normal range and dissolve, Lord God whatever is causing weight loss in the name of Jesus. Balance that thyroid, hallelujah, that the rocks and levels, whether it not be hyper or hypo, oh God, and whatever else might be causing, Lord God, her weight loss. We rebuke all diabetic loss in the name of Jesus. Let the blood cover, hallelujah. Heal every growth, every enlargement, every nodule, oh God, hallelujah, every tumor, oh God. Shrink it all the way down, whether it's in the prostate, Oh God, on the thyroid or whatever part in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray that you even uh, dissolve the nodule and all the white cells of the knot that is on Brother Prince's head in the name of Jesus. We pray that you quicken and revive, Lord God, the skin, the surface nerves, Lord God, of my hand where I was cut, of my son's face, oh God, and scalp, oh God, that you would revitalize every cell of skin, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we call up on you. You answer us and show us great and mighty things which we know of not concerning their healing. We pray that you touch Gertrude that, hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, we come against every emotional and mental disturbance. Ha, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We amen. Cancel the assignment of every schizophrenic, every bipolar, bipolar depression, manic depressive spirits in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Touch Scott David. Hallelujah. Touch. Hallelujah. Christian David. Hallelujah. Scott Daniel. Aubrey Clark. Olivia Kennedy. Prince. Oh God. In the name of Jesus. We cancel every assignment of loneliness, of unworthiness, Lord God, of depression that would try to come up on them that cause, Lord God, the very things that cause depression in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that you would increase their self-worth, oh God, to help them feel your love, your hallelujah, your closeness, oh God. We pray, hallelujah, that you would stir in them, Jesus, that they would seek after you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, we pray for Leslie Hamilton and Latasha Mason. We rebuke all depression from her so she can perform her duties properly, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for every outside in influence, Lord God, of internet, hallelujah, and frequencies, Lord God, and subliminal messages, hallelujah, and depressions, Lord, that come from video games, hallelujah, and desensitize, amen, our young people because they're committing murders and seeing death 
time and time again that it's not a reality, but let them realize that death is a reality and that is another side after you come out of death. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the issues uh, belong to you from death because you take over after a person died. Lord God, they leave this earth, but that's not the end of them. They have eternity to spend, hallelujah, somewhere. Oh God, so make this aware to their minds and their hearts. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, for health and healing and vitality. Remember, hallelujah, 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 the incarcerated, hallelujah, remember the sons and the daughters, Lord God, behind prison bars, especially those that are there unlawfully, unjustly, oh God, they are not guilty of the crime of which they have been given. They're not due the, the time which they have given for the crime, hallelujah, but because, Lord God, of the disproportionate, hallelujah, sentencing and, and the injustice that prevail in the courts, oh God, we pray that you, hallelujah, would appeal their case, that you would fight their case. How do you even remember Kurt Ran Reinhardt, who was shot by the police while he was on the ground with his hands behind his back, Lord God. We pray for camera footage, body cam, or somebody to arise on the scene that will fight this battle, oh God. Let it get the attention, Lord God, that will come to the nations, hallelujah, and that something be done and that the sentence be reversed, oh God, that the man not get off scot-free. Let your blood cover. We know he's not getting off scot-free because that is a man uh, uh, yeah. determination and a just a nation and a vengeance that will come from you. But Lord God, even in this life, we pray, Lord God, that you would vindicate him because vengeance belongs to you and anybody else, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we pray for every family represented. Thank you for Bishop Harris, Sister Barbara, and the prayers that they prayed. Thank you for every reader, every willing heart that was ready to participate. Lord God, forgive us for our tardiness in sending the readers their, 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 um, uh, um, pages to read and the size of it not being large enough for them uh, to see well, but we thank and praise you for we have gotten an understanding and we thank you for the willing heart for at first there'll be a willing mind oh God, you said, in the name of Jesus, we pray you take us from this place from not from that presence, should you come tonight and we wake up on tomorrow in heaven. We pray that everybody on this land will be there in the name of Jesus. We pray if anybody's not ready, hallelujah, if we have loved ones that are not ready, we'll do our due diligence, hallelujah, to try to appeal to them one more time, to call them one more time, or write a letter to them one more time. It's good if you put something in writing so they can look back at it, hallelujah, and read it over again, hallelujah, and seek to know you and those, Lord God, that are watching this in delayed time. Lord God, it's not Tuesday. Hallelujah, but it's some other day, but somebody sent them this video. Lord God, we pray that they have an understanding of the future of those who are not in the kingdom of God. It is if you die to go to hell, hallelujah, in the flames and then be called up out of hell and go into the lake of fire, which is the second death. We pray that someone would get an understanding that if they are born again of water and spirit saved and under the blood, when you say come, we will be caught up to meet you in the air forever. Be amen in your presence, rule and reign with you. Hallelujah. When you come back to the earth, receive crowns and hallelujah rewards. Hallelujah. And amen. I have not seen ears and not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men. The great, wonderful things that you have prepared for those who love you. So we can't even begin to imagine the glory, the glory that is in Lord God, hallelujah, your heaven, because amen, the foundations are 12 precious stones, hallelujah, diamonds and sapphires and emeralds and rubies and carbuncles and all the things that people, amen, steal and try to break in uh, to get in the street to pay with pure gold, pure gold, hallelujah, so pure, it's like it's transparent, oh my God, what a city, what a city, gates made out of pearls, oh Lord, 
Lord, what a city. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And you have prepared for us a place. And so, Lord God, help us to keep looking up and not give up. Hallelujah. And let not our heart be troubled because you will come again. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Come on.